Hey guys, this is Caspi with Tape, and today you join me for the first episode of Kerbal Rising, the new collaborative series between me and the Beardy Penguin. Now, my faction is the United Federation of Nebos. We are the bringers of democracy to a system in chaos, a system where pirates and rogue factions run wild, terrorizing innocents and taking what they please, but no longer. We have built ourselves a perfect society where people are free and safe and happy, and we will bring that to everyone. Diplomacy has failed, so today we marshal the first ships in our fleet to begin this mission. Peace, order, democracy, no matter the cost. So let's go and take a look at the first part of that uh, fleet right now. We're sending up a tactical bomber to the carrier because it needs to be taken out to our moon. Because the pirates have actually taken over our moon, which is a big spit in the face of our perfect democracy. And we cannot have this, so we're going to start our campaign at our own moon, Nevis. And uh, yes, so we're sending up a P-1 Peregrine tactical bomber. This works in both atmosphere um, extremely well and in vacuum, which is what our moon consists of. Um, there is no atmosphere, so uh, this can do both and it will be taking out any enemies we shall find. It is using a thermal ramjet, which um, basically uh, superheats air over a nuclear reactor to provide thrust in the atmosphere and then switches over to liquid fuel in the vacuum, which you'll see us switch over to in a second. So we have pretty much infinite delta to be in the atmosphere and uh, quite a quite a lot in um, in vacuum but uh, I'd rather not have to fly all the way to the moon with just this it would it would run low on fuel and it would be no good so we're gonna do a little inclination change and uh, match our orbit with the carrier and go and see it um, on the dark side of Kerbin now uh, just uh, flying past the carrier and slowing down you get the first glimpse at the carrier and it is quite colossal we're flying in now with quite a big plane um, through the uh, side entrance and you can just see the scale of this thing it is huge and it is this big because it's built uh, uh, it's built to fit vehicles bigger than this this is the tactical bomber but if we uh could, if we were using ground vehicles, we'd need a transport plane, which would be gigantic. So uh, this just sits nicely there um, in the carrier. And we're also going to bring along a fighter. This is a vacuum fighter. It's not nearly as capable as the bomber because it's too small to carry a nuclear reactor. So it's just using nuclear engines, but it is a VTOL. So if the uh, tactical bomber is lost in the campaign, we can send this down to finish the job and just land if need be. This is just a backup, it's not actually particularly capable, and I'm not a big fan of this craft actually, but it, uh, it should do the job if need be. Now you can see the scale inside the hangar. This is uh, quite a big carry made for carrying a tactical bomber, um, a transport plane, and four other craft. Uh, usually two corvettes and two skiffs, but today uh, we can use uh, ground fighters as well. So welcome to the UFN Titan. But before we send an unarmed carrier, we're going to have to clear the orbital space around Nevis, which is being defended by quite a big corvette. So we've, um, we've marshaled ourselves our first combat ships in our fleet. This is a Beluga-class corvette. And it's, well, it's a pretty beefy ship. It's much smaller than a lot of things we'll be launching in this series. Um, but it's, uh, yeah, it has two torpedoes and two 30mm guns. And there is our orbital shipyard uh, hanging in the background where this was constructed. But the Corvette will not be alone. It will be accompanied by a Trident-class skiff, named for the kind of three prongs at the back. This is actually just a repurposed kind of person personal leisure vehicle. Um, it can actually fly back into the atmosphere and glide to a landing. It was initially used by civilians for... Uh, Leisure, but we've uh, outfitted it with a couple of 20mm chain guns uh, so that we don't have to develop a new craft right now And uh, it'll be heading up to kind of fulfill a space fighter role as it is uh, quite maneuverable and quick So now we carry out our burn in relative synchronicity synchronicity. Yeah, something like that uh, These are just using uh, fusion engines that provides quite a lot of Delta V and they can be by themselves for a long time But they can't really go into planetary very quickly for that We have the Kerbstein drive mounted on the back of the carrier as you may have seen there was some uh, a couple of big Kerbstein drives. Those can't be used near planets, however, because they create quite a lot of radiation and would irradiate the system in a matter of weeks. Um, so in the system, we're going to have to use uh, just uh, fusion engines, and that's what these are using right now. The skiff jumping ahead a little bit, clearly quite eager to get up to Nevis and kill itself a pirate, but it would be foolish to go alone in such a small ship. Anyway, with that done,
done, we make a quick uh, inclination change over the rings, again, quite synchronized, so that we will arrive uh, nicely at uh, Nevis. And then we fly on up there. You can see the ship hovering there, the Thrata class corvette, quite a big bastard. And he's actually got quite a lot of armor, so we're going to have to think of a smart way to take him out. We're getting to orbit now, um, just actually over where we're going to be attacking, an island surrounded by lava. And that is why we're using a tactical bomber instead of crap, instead of uh, tanks, because that would be um, kind of dumb. We can't drive across lava. Our technology is good. It's not that good. Driving across lava, we, we will solve it at some point, but not today. But anyway, yes. Um, so after a quick burn and a little bit of a over burn, which we correct, we have arrived at Nevis. And after getting ourselves our intercept with our enemy, um, we will creep up on him through the dark, through the darkness of Nevis, just over the rings of N Nebos, and uh, he won't see us coming even a bit. Now, as I said, this enemy is armoured, which means I'm not confident with our unarmoured ships that we could take him down with uh, just our guns. He has pretty much the same weapons as our corvette. So! We're going to use our torpedoes to try and destroy him quickly. We see him 14 kilometers away-ish, and uh, we're moving in now, releasing our torpedoes. One of them goes first, lining up, getting our intercept with the enemy. And once that's locked in, it will be full steam ahead. We need to be moving fast enough that uh, the enemy cannot shoot down this torpedo, because, well... 30mm guns do quite a lot to a very small torpedo, but we'll be moving extremely fast, making sure our intersect is at 0 kilometers, and hopefully uh, we'll be able to take him out with the first shot. That would be quite desirable, um, since we would rather not uh, we'd rather not lose any of our ships, since we only have two right now. It hits, but the warhead does not detonate. But it is a skew now, making our next shot a little easier. But he'll be writing himself quickly. So we jump to our second torpedo. We line him up, and this time I'm going to manually detonate that warhead. I think I did something wrong in the weapon manager. It should detonate on impact, but um, apparently it didn't that time, which is a little annoying. Um, but this time we will definitely take him out. Hopefully destroy him with just this torpedo. That, uh, that way we'll take no fire, which will be quite nice. But we will have to be quick. We're drifting in quite quickly now. We're actually on an escape trajectory because this planet, this uh, moon has such low gravity. Um, but yes, uh, we're going to just try and get over probably 500 meters a second. You can actually hear we took a hit there. And, uh... Looks like we're coming in pretty well. There's quite a lot of fire, but I don't think we're getting hit. And just as we collide, I hit the detonate button, and we watch the ship erupt into explosions. Just eviscerated, engines torn off, and just exploding all over the rings. You can actually see this uh, ship is a reference from the... Uh, from the uh, movie Rogue One. Uh, <laughs> it's the ramming ship. But annoyingly, uh, being such a tough ship, it's still alive. It's wounded and uncontrollable and can't point towards us, but it can get fleeting shots. So we are going to have to move in and take uh, and take it down with guns, but it shouldn't be too much of a problem since it can't uh, shoot very consistently. And we are getting our first shots now with our 30mm guns. The 20mm will have to be within 25 kilometers. So I'm going to get the Corvette to kind of snipe and lay down support fire and maybe even try and draw some fire while the skiff moves in quickly, flies past it sideways and strafes it out. So we're going to fire up our engines. You can see the traces of the bullets coming in uh, to, well, from the enemy and towards the enemy. And one actually smacks into our skiff. We switch away quickly, but then we switch back and see that one of our radiators is gone. Pretty much superficial damage. Um, we don't, we can survive with two, um, even though this does have two nuclear reactors in each of those booms. Those are functional. Um, they're not just there for show. Um, but yes, we're moving in, getting into four kilometer, uh, within four kilometers now, putting down fire. There are explosions going off. It looks like we still haven't taken out the, uh, the uh, enemy corvette now, but uh, we are getting into range of our 20 mils and soon they will open up and we'll be able to slide by putting down as much fire as possible. Another, more shots coming in from our enemy, only occasionally though, although you are only seeing the traces, not all the shots. But with the combined fire of our two ships and after losing one more radiator, we lay waste to this perfidious pirate who thinks that they can take over our moon, enslave people, and take as they please. Well, not today. We light them up and we see the ship going up in flames over the rings of Nebos, and eventually it will split. We will be cleaved in twain, 
and we all watch it go down to the space Davy Jones locker. I guess there's a Davy Jones locker in space, you know, he's a pirate, that's where he's going. Anyway, the point is, the ship is dead. We fly past the debris and watch the uh, crew be, well, finished off. We're not taking prisoners today. Um, <laughs> and there he goes. Our ship's still firing, though, over-eager at their first combat scenario, and it went absolutely perfectly, minus the loss of the radi radiators. But we'll just drop down to the shipyard and get those repaired. The Beluga class flying to the, through the debris now, uh, taking a look at its work. And now the skies are clear for our carrier to head up. The uh, UFN Titan Titan class carrier, named obviously the first ship named for the class. And you can see the engines now. On the outside, there's two massive curb steam drives, and uh, the inner engine is just a fusion torch, but it is extremely powerful. It has two modes, inefficient, very high thrust mode, which we're using right now, and a slightly more efficient mode, um, which is more like a standard nuclear engine. Um, so we have a lot of options in terms of, in terms of efficiency and thrust, but today I thought I'd just go for the thrust, since we're just going to the moon. And this is a carrier that can go into planetary, so but we can actually see the target. We have the target in our sights. There is Nevis hanging there. Um, we can see the reflection of the burning hot lava, which will be a uh, Rather worrying for our crew, no doubt, but we have expert pilots here in uh, here at Nebos. And then a little later, we do ourselves our inclination change so that we will actually meet the planet, flying through the rings rather beautifully. Um, I love how this planet looks. I mean, oh my God, Game Links, Jesus Christ, how do you how do you do this? This is Game Links Planet Pack, by the way, and it is amazing. And then here we are, actually arriving at Nebos. Very dark planet a lot of the time, so it's sometimes hard to tell. But uh, yes, we are here, getting into orbit, doing a little burn. Actually, quite a big burn. Uh, Neva, Nevis has such low gravity, you have to be going extremely slowly to stay into orbit. Uh, stay in orbit of it. The uh, um, the skiff and the corvette actually left orbit of Nebos after the fight um, because they were just going a little faster, and they escaped back to uh, Nebos, um, which is uh, yeah, the planet's Nebos, by the way, and this is Neva, Nevis, the moon. Um, but anyway, we do eventually get into orbit, and uh, then we ready our tactical bomber to head down there to lay waste to our enemies. Another rather beautiful shot. <laughs> it is so hard not to get beautiful shots in this system. Seriously, Game Link's Planet Black. It's, it's beautiful. Anyway, but yes, you can get a good look at our aircraft now. And uh, it's actually... Uh, bomber might be a bit of a misnomer. It's not carrying a bomb. It's carrying a 30mm goalkeeper cannon in its bomb bay. Because bombs, they don't work that well on really low gravity worlds. So I thought it best to just bring ourselves a nice little gun to tear through these uh, these tanks on the surface. There are three tanks, uh, two mediums and two lights, and they are very well armored, which means we're going to have to punch through that armor, um, which is gonna take a little while. Um, so we're gonna head down there and uh, fly up above and try and shoot them from, well, shoot them from above. However, somewhat annoyingly, um, every time I load in, the uh, light tank pretty much explodes or warps somewhere. Um, it's because it's so light and the gravity is so low the, the game can't figure out if it's flying or landed, so pretty much every time it just exploded, which makes my job a little easier, um, but I don't think it affected anything too much based on how the battle goes. Now, the thing is, these are very well armored tanks, but they are tanks, so they don't have any AA guns, and they've positioned themselves on an island, which means my only option was to attack from the air. Um, so the tank cannons basically never get a chance to shoot at me. I think this may have been impossible if they just had like a single phalanx gun. Um, but even the light tank as well, um, which did explode, um, it just had a tank cannon. 25mm, very fast firing, good at defending against ground targets, but not so good when something's directly above you. So if I pull some fairly fancy maneuvers and just stay above them, I probably won't take any fire, which is, yeah, pretty good. That is difficult, however, because if I do get into the elevation of their guns, which might happen, because, um... There's no atmosphere. I'm having to do this all just with one engine, because this also isn't a VTOL, because then I'd have to have another nuclear reactor on it, and that would just be too heavy. Um, so, yeah, we have to do this all with one engine, which makes us quite the challenge, but as long as I, well, as long as I complete the challenge, then uh, we should be able to lay waste to these tanks. You can see I'm just drop, dropping directly down on top of them now. We get our first explosion from the first medium tank, and I'm taking no fire. And when I get too close and would get into the arc, I'm just going to jet away and keep firing at them. This was, uh, at first I was rather annoyed that, uh, the pirates, um, put, uh, put the tanks on an island, because it made it quite annoying to attack, especially given that the island is surrounded by lava. Um, 
but it actually turned out to kind of work out because it forced me to use a tactical bomber and they were tanks so we just we just do this for a while we do take a little bit of fire at some point but you can see as long as I just kind of keep out of their range and then keep flying around I'll be able to fairly easily lay waste to them which is uh, rather nice so I just do a bunch of these maneuvers eventually I do turn on RCS which yeah there we go which allows me quite quite serious maneuverability and I can just keep passing over them falling on them putting fire on them and uh, yeah these pirates really don't know uh, really don't know what's coming for them they uh, <laughs> clearly clearly thought we'd be attacking on lava proof boats or something um, but yes yeah, so um, we light them up quite nicely now. You can see we've actually destroyed the gun off the first tank because, uh, well, because we put so much 30mm fire on it. The armor is extremely thick. Um, we rarely get rounds through it, and uh, we probably won't destroy any of it for quite a while. But uh, we can just stray forever. We have, like, almost 4,000 rounds or something like that, so it should be fine. And we actually pop the armor on top of the tank. This is actually after quite a while, um, but... Uh, yeah, you can see it just pops there, goes up, and the uh, tank is destroyed. Now it's just one left, sitting atop a biodome, which probably isn't great for the uh, pirates inside. They will uh, asphyxiate to death, but that's what they get for, uh, well, for crossing the UFN. That is uh, not something that is taken lightly, and, uh, you, you know, we're, we're sad that they're, they're all, they'll all die, you know, writhing in agony. But they shouldn't have sat, shouldn't have put a tank over a biodome. That was just foolish. I mean, I didn't bring the most accurate gun in the world. Um, so, <laughs> they're gonna die. I actually saw just then the tank did fire around at me. The guns are working on the tank, but they can only pitch so much, and it went quite low. If it had gotten a few more shots, it could have done some damage, but I imagine actually in testing this can sustain some fire. I'm not sure from tank rounds, but I think those are pretty low caliber tank rounds um, based on the points that they've used. So, uh, I mean, yeah, I think uh, I think we would have been fine even if we'd taken a little more fire. Anyway, now we're coming in for a nice low pass, trying to uh, put some bullets through the back of it. Maybe some of them slip, hit the biodome, kill some other pirates. You know, shit happens. I mean, we do have to take out the pirates because this isn't just a revenge on pirates. I mean, this is a logical mission. This is a mining installation, and we need those resources to build up our craft, to spread democracy to the system, to spread freedom. We're the good guys here, so we, we need these resources to build bigger ships, to kill more pirates more quickly to bring freedom to more people. I mean, it's just a cyclic thing, and, uh, yeah. So, uh, we just, we take a bunch of strafing runs. This does take a while. This armor is bloody thick, and the 30 mil isn't the most powerful, but the goalkeeper was definitely a good choice, and we get a few explosions there. Probably punch through the gun now, so I'm pretty much safe to just kind of circle like this, and, uh, light them up, basically, and eventually we'll punch through the armor, strike through the, uh, cockpit, and kill the pirate, the perfidious evil pirate who's been doing terrible things to, to to civilians and towns, robbing them, taking taking what they please. We cannot allow this. Um, so, and now we're pretty much just sitting in the air with uh, using the low gravity to uh, to our aid. Um, just lighting up, just lighting that guy up. You can see we've destroyed his gun now, and he's peppered with bullet holes. Soon they will penetrate through and rip the tank apart. And there we go, our explosion, I think probably of the top panel or some connector piece, because soon after, um, the, uh, the rounds penetrate more, and, uh, well, just eviscerate the tank, killing the pilot, well, I guess the driver. And there it goes, splitting apart, laid bare for my guns to tear into it, and the explosion goes off, no doubt causing more damage to that biodome, killing, uh, well, killing a few people who, uh, thought it was good to mess with the UFN in our own territory! Well, no more! They are gone, they are dead, and the final shots will actually kill that pilot, because, you know, we gotta kill that pilot. He might have a gun in there, this is all just, you know, it's just logic. Anyway, after that we just uh, get ourselves maybe the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. Um, <laughs> Nebos hanging over Nevis. Um, with its rings and its uh, redness on the other side. I don't know what causes that. I mean, of course we know. We've been here for like a thousand years. We, we know what's going on with our planet. Um, <laughs> anyway, and then I couldn't be bothered to go and fetch the VTOL because, you know, it's all the way up in the carrier. I, I don't know where I parked. And so we land on our tail and just get ourselves flipped onto our wheels. And gentlemen, the day is ours. We have vanquished the pilots from Nevis. This mining installation is ours. And now... Well, now we actually have 10 points worth of sh uh, worth of craft to launch because it's the end of my turn. But I'm actually going to wait uh, till the start of next turn. I'm going to stockpile those points and then I'll have 16 points worth of things to launch. And then I can launch, well, some big spaceships for doing quite serious damage to people. 
because now we have secured our system, we can move beyond our system to go and take other planets. Free them! I mean, not take them, free them! Yes, that's what we're doing. And uh, hopefully we won't meet any other large empire in the process. I don't think there's one in the system. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, yes, that is the end of the video. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you haven't already seen the Baby Penguins first episode, you should go and watch it, because that's the actual uh, first episode. And yeah, I mean, you kind of need to watch it all, because, I mean, eventually, maybe our factions might meet in something... Well, I'm sure there'll be a peaceful, you know, it'll be fine. There'll be there'll be no war between us. It'll be great. Anyway, but yes, like I said, this is the, uh, this is the end of the video. I hope you've enjoyed it, and uh, I hope you will come back for next episode, because, uh, well, well, there'll be even bigger battles, even more pirates being killed, and uh, all will be well. So yes, I hope you've enjoyed this. I will see you next time.